three, two, one. Here we go! We're back, and this is the dancing that I do to that music that you hear or that you see behind the scenes. I'm doing this, and Dennis is like, it looks like you're swatting a fly, and I'm like, you know what? what? You know what? It's like a type of break dancing that he does, it and is. I call it the clock because he's like here, and then he's like there, and then he's like there, and then when he hits 12 o'clock, he goes dong. Literally, we're going to call it the clock. That's going to be Andy's new dance move. I could do the, uh, I could do that old school from the, what is it? Uh, my parents when they were growing up. Remember the old swim? You'd see. Oh on yeah. The, on the, oh yeah. The dance. Show. Remember growing oh, up? Oh yeah. The, I do. No, I, but what but I'm it's saying from is the 60s. No, but I'm saying remember growing up and on it was either I think I want to say almost Saturday mornings, but it was probably Saturday nights. But they had those silly ass dance shows. Remember? You mean, are you talking like, like, like American Soul Bandstand, Train, yeah, Soul Train, Soul Train, American, Soul Bandstand. Train, American yeah. Bandstand, stuff like that? Yeah. yeah. And then they had the Dick Clark show that the was Dick Clark. before that. Hee Haw. Hee Haw. That, that's a dance Hee Haw. No, yeah. Hee Haw's not a dance show. where you got your dancing Hee Haw is not a dance show. But it's just the fact. I remember that was like the weekly. It was. It was at, obviously it was I a weekly show. I wanted to learn show. how to play banjo just like Roy Clark. And, that, and I never did. But that was a show that my parents, you know, it was it was whatever, you know, say Wednesday night. Wednesday night, he hauls one. Let's everybody sit down and watch he haul. Right. And we had our Dukes of Hazard night. Everybody and my dad would say, get up and turn it up or turn it down because I was the remote control. Wow, you guys are old. <laughs> I know. Wow. Way to insult us right out of the gate. And we're back after just a 10 minute break. Like I told you, uh, Stippling Vaughn says, I'm just going to sit here comfortably and enjoy the interview better than. Uh, Binger after the uh, oh god yeah that's true I love what the judge said to him but that's a whole different topic for a different time we're going to get right to it we have a wonderful guest today um, I've known Bob for over 20 years 25 years something like that uh, Bob was a guy whose work I looked at um, and admired when I was a kid uh, looking at comics and wanting to get into the business uh, and yeah I mean he, he was definitely an inspiration. And Bob's in worked on some influence. of my favorite books. Everybody here knows I'm a big X-Men fan. So, you know, New Mutants, love the New Mutants. I mean, really, I, I've got a lot of amazing Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Yep, all excited. So all right. let's, Without, let's bring him in. There we go. Well, hello, Bob. <laughs> hello, how are you? How's it going, man? So, all right, all right. Yeah, so it has. Yeah, I think I, I know I've known you for at least twenty five years, at least. It's been a long time. Yeah, yeah. So which remember. you know, when I do that math in my head of my age, I'm like, damn, I'm. Ugh, I don't even like to think about it. Because I mean, I, you're old. I know you're like <laughs> is old too. So. I don't know if we met at a convention or up in the Marvel office. Maybe I don't remember. It was probably a convention. I, I'm going to guess it was at a convention, maybe a Megacon or something like, or a Heroes Con or something. Yeah. Something like that. Or, oh, you know what it might have been? Actually, now that I think about it, it might have been in the early 90s when I was sharing a studio with John Beatty and through a phone call that way. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Because I know we used to just, you know, there was no internet and stuff back then, so we would, to pass time, you know, call different people up that we knew and just shoot the shit. So that could be it. So we could we could thank John for it. So, all right, yeah, you know. So big question that usually our our, our viewers like to know because you probably some of them may have met you, some of them may have not. But we always like to find out the origin story. Who not only your arch villains, but how did you get into comic books in the first place? And you know. Um, and who was it with? Um, it, it's, it's kind of an involved story. Uh, I never planned to be a comic book artist. I was not a big comic book fan. 
Oh, wow. um, when I was a kid, I read Superman comics and my sister read Archie comics. And so we would buy those and then swap. And so I read a lot of Archie and Superman. I, I liked all of the Harvey line of comics with the uh, Wendy, the good little witch and Casper, the mm -hmm. ghost, and all those. Um, I was, I was much more into humor than uh, dramatic superheroes. And uh, my intent was, you know, as a, as a young kid as a teenager my intent was to work for mad magazine and be another more trucker and do movie satires and tv satires or maybe go out to california work for disney do animation um or maybe have my own newspaper comic strip um i read the all the newspaper comics growing up and i always wanted to have my own comic strip but it never really, I, I never even thought about working in, in comic books um, wow. until I was, I was working at a grocery store uh, as a, in my late teens in high school. And one of the guys working at the grocery store with me, when he found out I could draw, um, he said, oh, you got you to gotta be working for Marvel Comics. And I said, oh, yeah. And he, <laughs> All right, I, I figured I'll give that a try. And I, I was thinking of it, you know, like a stepping stone onto something else. I'd just get in there and show everybody how great I was and and, and move on. And so, um, you know, I, I went up, I got some samples together and went up to New York, actually sold my car to fi finance a trip up to New York I, I, from Tampa, Florida. Okay. And um, got some cash for my car and... Uh, went up and I was afraid to go into Manhattan. Uh, you know, being from Florida, we assumed you'd get mugged and killed as soon as you got <laughs> in Manhattan. Um, so I landed in LaGuardia and uh, got a room at the YMCA in Queens. It was like $7 a night or something, uh, really cheap to stay at, at the Y. Um, but it took me like a week to build up my courage just to go into Manhattan. Oh, and wow. it was it was the summer of uh, I think 1973, and uh, so I went to the New York Comic Con, and uh, walked in there, and uh, first person I saw basically was this guy who happened to be in my high school art class in Tampa, um, Pat Broderick. No and way! I, oh wait, I, you guys went to high school together? Yeah, he was a year behind me. He's a year younger than me. Um, oh wow! So, we weren't friends, you know, because we were in different grades, but he was in the yeah. same class, just kind of uh, in a in a different corner or something. I don't, I don't know. Uh, was, I mean, we said hello at the time in class, and I looked at something he was drawing, and he probably looked at something I was drawing, but um, we didn't really get to know each other. But then, you know, there he is in New York, and I, I said, you know, weren't you in Mrs. Nimitz's art class? And he said, yeah, who are, who are you? I'm, I remember you. And so we started talking and uh, became roommates. Um, oh, wow. So he was trying to get into the Dennis, uh, the DC apprenticeship program that they had going at the time. And I said, well, I'll try to get into that too. And so he actually did get in, get accepted. And I did not. I got rejected. And, uh, but, you know, being roommates, we were talking all the time and, and showing our artwork to each other. Pat kept saying, you've got to go up and, and meet Neil Adams. Um, he, he's, he's the guy that'll, that'll help you get your foot in the door. Because I was having no luck. You know, I, right. I went up to Marvel. Uh, they didn't even want to see my portfolio. They, had, they said, oh, we got enough people here. And went up to D.C. And uh, the art director at D.C. Comics, Joe Orlando, said, um, he looked at my sample and said, well, you put a lot of work into these. Um, but you need to go back to school and learn how to draw. Oh, wow. and, <laughs> and I had already been to art school. I'd been to uh, majored in uh, art in college for a year. Um, I, I figured I, I knew how to draw. So I was trying to figure out what, what was Joe Orlando seeing in my work or not seeing. Um, so I just, you know, got some comics and started looking at them and studying them and trying to figure out what I didn't know, which uh, I figured out was a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, there's a lot more to drawing comics than just being able to draw. Right. So oh, yeah. 
anyway, Pat kept saying, you got to go meet Neil Adams. You got to meet Neil Adams. I said, well, he'll see, he's just another artist. What, how's he going to help me do anything? But he talked me into it. I finally went up to continuity and met Neil and showed him my samples. And Neil said, uh, well, what do you want? And I said, uh, anything that pays. Because <laughs> I was down to my last $10 from the money I selling my car. I was ready to call my parents for a bus money to go back to Tampa. Oh, wow. And he said, okay, okay. So um, he picked up the phone and called uh, John Verporten, who was the production mm -hmm. manager at Marvel at the time. And he said, John, I got, I got a guy here uh, with, well, some art potential, but a lot of lettering potential. Do you need anybody in the production department there? And John said, yeah, yeah, we could use, use somebody. And so, you know, Neil got me the job in the production department at Marvel just on his say-so. Wow. Uh, so I, I started that next Monday, and uh, they didn't even want to see my portfolio. They just said, here's your desk. <laughs> Get to work. Wow. And so one of, my, one of the first things I had to do for my job was actually tape the uh, page numbers onto the pages of art. Onto the oh, really? <laughs> That's what they used to do. It was, it was, you know, at the time, the job was called Paste Up and Mechanicals. Oh, yeah. And so I was doing lettering corrections. I learned how to letter comic books from the the two guys that did all of the title lettering at Marvel, Danny Crespi and Maury Kormoto. Yeah. Great guys. Um, they taught me the basics. And um, I, I, it was me and one other guy, a uh, grouchy guy with, with – uh, nobody liked him. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember his name now. Uh, I, can't, I can't think of his name. But he and I were the production department. Um, and so I would do all these lettering corrections. And after a couple months, I got promoted up to doing art corrections. Um, and then, you know, it was a great place to start because I was right there in the Marvel office. I could show my samples to all the editors. I got to meet everybody. Sure. And it was a small operation at that time. Uh, Stan's office was right around the corner. I was like, six feet from John Ramita's office. Uh, I was working right next to uh, Frank Giacoya and Mike mm -hmm. Esposito. They were working up in the office at that time. And um, Marie Severin was down the hall. It was, it was just like a handful of people in the Marvel office at that time. And it was a real friendly atmosphere. I think at that time there was like a rotating editor-in-chief uh, thing, Roy, like Roy Thomas was there for a while, Marv Wolfram was editor-in-chief for a while, Kent Lynn Ween, um, I, I don't forget who else. Um, so this was pre-Jim Shooter days. Right. Um, but I, I got to meet all those editors, and finally, you know, I kept showing my samples to them. Finally, one of them, Tony Isabella, uh, gave me a shot at inking something. Um and then Marv Wolfman gave me a shot at uh, doing this uh, job for Crazy Magazine, um, a satire of the movie Westworld. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. He saw that I liked doing humor stuff. So Westworld was, uh, my satire was actually my first published work for Crazy. Oh, cool. Uh, the job that Tony gave me never got published. Uh, that was inking Don Heck on some black and white magazine. Oh, that's too bad. But I, I was... So I did a few jobs for Crazy, but I was, you know, still working in the production department. And and Mike Esposito said, you know, you can learn how to ink faster than you can learn how to pencil. I said, oh, yeah. All right. I'll, I'll give that a shot. So I started doing background inking for Mike, uh, for Klaus Janssen, for Al Milgram. Uh, and then, you know, like a month or so later, I started getting my own ink work. And my inking career kind of took off. Oh, wow. I never knew that. That's really cool. Um, the Westworld, I'm assuming you did pencils and inks on it, not just pencils. Yeah, I did pencils and inks. Um, you know, but horrible, horrible job. I didn't, I didn't know how to ink. <laughs> I didn't really know how to pencil. Um, I mean, there's, there's cute things about it, but it's a pretty bad job. <laughs> well, when you did, how long, when did you do the, because I some of the stuff I loved as a kid was in Crazy, and it was the Teen Hulk stuff you did. And did Maurice doing, Severin start that? Maurice Severin was the artist on that, and for whatever, I don't know if she got busy doing cover designs or whatever, but um, 
she asked me to take over for her on that. I think that was in later there, like 1981 or so. Yeah. That was several years later. Uh, so before that, I did like uh, three or four movie satires. Okay. I love that Teen Hulk stuff. I remember talking to you about it because I just... Yeah, that's you know, the way some you... of the, that was some of my favorite work from my career. That, that was a lot of fun, um, you know, humor. That's that's what yeah. I really enjoyed doing. And I felt I was, I was best at. Um, so I kept doing that, you know, for, for quite a while. I did like five or six episodes of Teen Hulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I had those. Those are fantastic. And you were doing all the gray wash and everything on them and stuff. So that was who wrote that? Do you remember? I do. That was Jim Owsley. It was Jim Owsley. Okay. What's what's what did he change his name to? Christopher Priest? Yes, yes. Yeah. Christopher Priest. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know the story behind that name change, but his real name is Jim Owsley, right? Yeah, I think he wanted to distance himself from uh, what he was known for and oh. kind of restart his career. Um, I don't know what he's doing now. I haven't seen him in, in a few years. Yeah. Well, how did um, – so after that stuff, uh, what was, I guess, do you remember the first – comic book stuff you did for Marvel. And I do, one of the things when you brought up Pat Broderick that came to my mind was the few, because it was only a few, Captain Marvel covers you inked over them. Because I thought those, an like, the, and an issue, yeah. Because that, even to my kid eye, I guess you could say when I got, when I bought those, and I bought them as back issues, I didn't start buying comics till 83, but then once I got in, I, you know, I started going back. So I bought him his back issues, but man, it just, I, I know, I think the main guy that inked Pat was Bruce Patterson, right? Your work just really stood out from Bruce's. And I was like, and you know, once again, in my, my young eye, I was just like, wow, this is just, I don't know what it is, but this just looks so, looks so much cooler to me. And yeah, like thanks. I said, I mean, and I, I think that's one of the full runs I own is I own all the Captain Marvels from one to 62. Um, but yeah, those are just, I, I love that stuff. But what was the first book, if you remember, that you did? Well, Pat, you know, because we were roommates, uh, I ended up inking a couple of his jobs, I think. Um, but the first work I, I did as an inker, actually, they hired me and Pat both to add ink tones to, or wash tones to uh, some of the Filipino artists on the Kung Fu magazines. Oh. They were doing black and white stuff. And um, uh, we just, all we did was add Zipatone or ink wash uh, to their inks on a few jobs early on when I was still in production. Um, and then I started inking some of those uh, jobs for the Kung Fu magazines myself. I inked Mike Bosberg. Mm. And um, uh, Keith Pollard, uh, Keith Pollard might have been my first ink job on one of those. Um, inked a few issues over him. And then I started inking a lot of Sal Buscema, um, Son yeah. of Satan. Oh, cool. Um, that's when suddenly I got my first compliment from somebody up in the office. Said, oh, nice. Um and so I felt I was on the right track. I was using all brush pretty much. Um, the the inkers that I really admired were mostly brush inkers at that time. Um, and then I, I got a, a desk up at uh, Continuity. Uh, you know, it could rent an office space up at Continuity then mm -hmm. and became one of the crusty bunkers. Oh, okay. Uh, sure you guys know about the crusty bunkers where just anybody pretty much that walked in the office of, of continuity could be a crusty bunker. Yeah. Um, and so Neil looked at my stuff again and he said, we've, we've got to wash out this style you're been inking in and, and get you in a new direction. And so he showed me some stuff that he had done and uh, you know, Russ Heath was there doing his great inks in, in the office and Dick Giordano. And um, so I started studying all that stuff. Uh, and that's, that's when I 
I actually started to understand how to ink, you know, and, and mm -hmm. what to try to do and what, what not to do. Um, and so I started doing some, some better ink jobs. Um, I did a defenders issue over Sal Buscema. Almost everything I did over him was breakdowns. Um, but I liked inking breakdowns. Um, but that was one of my first best jobs was, I don't remember the number, but it's uh, Defenders. Oh, and, cool. Um, I don't know. I just did a bunch of fill-ins, uh, inking here and there. And then I, I went over to D.C. And uh, because I went over to D.C., I got a $5 page raise. And, oh, nice. And um, did some Legion of Superheroes for them, a couple of issues of Aquaman. Um, oh, yeah. You went uh, the Aquaman. That was Don Newton, right? Don Newton. Fun stuff to ink. Yeah, really nice. I've never seen – I'm a huge Don Newton fan. Huge. I have never seen his pencils before. Beautiful I've tried pencil. doing a Google search. What was that? Beautiful pencils. Very, very finished. Uh, and again, you could just trace them pretty much, or you could you could take over a little bit. I, I was never much of a tracer, so I would always you know try to put my style on top of it. Um, um, but I think I did a good job on – I only did two issues over him. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was fun. Oh, no, that was good-looking stuff too. Yeah. Um, were you still brushed back then on that stuff, or after Neil, did you kind of switch to a pen? No, that some? was still brush. Um, when did I go to pen? Um, oh, a couple years later, um, I got infatuated with Tom Palmer. He was inking um, Tuma Dracula over Gene Colon. Mm -hmm. And um, I just loved the way his ink line looked. And, you know, Neil... Neil used brush and pen, uh, but he was I, primarily a pen inker, I think. Um, and so I really liked what Neil was doing with inking. Um, so I started trying to emulate those two and um, figure out what ink pens. I knew which ink pens Neil was using because I was right there in the studio, but I I didn't really know what Tom was using, and he wouldn't tell you. It was, it was kind of a secret. Really? Um, so Joe Rubenstein and I were both always trying to figure out uh, what kind of pen nib uh, Tom Palmer was using. And we were always trying to ink, you know, similar to, to what Tom was doing. That's funny. Now we know where Terry Austin gets it from, not telling people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Terry was up at Continuity when I was um, inking on uh, the X-Men, I guess. Uh, John Byrne, probably. Yeah. Oh, he was doing that up there, huh? That's cool. Yeah, yeah. He was using the same nib that Neil used, the the Dot One Seventy. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. totally, totally different uh, result. But I think he might have filed his down the point down a little bit. Um, uh, he used that. It was kind of a fairly stiff point. Oh, okay. And then he, I think he used a lot of rapidographs too. Yeah. What was Dick using mostly at that time? He was You're a brush inker. Oh, really? Yeah, he would he, he would occasionally ink with a uh, what the um, Jalop two ninety, I think. Um, gosh, that's been so long. Well, I know that Neil's talked about the two ninety before. It's a real and I've played with it. It's really flexible and stuff. So. Oh, I love that point. That was an amazing pinpoint uh, that they quit making. Oh. And then started making it again, but it was totally different. It wasn't it wasn't good anymore. Oh. Um, but the old Jalot 290 was a wonderful pinpoint. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think I did some of my best uh, ink work with that. Um, it was so flexible. You know, you, you could do right. really thick, thin line work with it. Well, that's why I would look at some of Giordano's inking, one like Mike Sikowski and stuff. And he's another guy that when he inks somebody – uh, there, there's a handful of people that are anchors that when they ink somebody, you can, I'll buy it because of it. Cause it's like, Oh, Bob inked this. And you can see the nice combination of styles, you know, same with Rubenstein and Giordano and Palmer. And I would look at some of the inking Giordano did over like um, Mike Sikowski. And I knew he was a brush guy, but I'm looking at some of that and like the hair and stuff. And I'm going, no way that looks like a pen. 
That's probably brush. He he could do amazing things with a brush. Um, rarely, very rarely inked with a pen. Okay. I, I, I remember, you know, one or two jobs where he used a pen, um, you know, almost always a brush for everything. He would do backgrounds with a brush, um, although he did use background assistance. Right. You know, Joe and Klaus Jansen, um, and I don't know who else uh, used to do backgrounds for him. Right. That's cool. So I'm kind of curious, Bob. Um, so we now know, know how you got into it. And that, and you've worked on a lot of different characters over the years. Which one is your favorite one to draw? And is that different from your favorite one to ink? Yeah. Um, you, you know, it's it's not that simple a question because there's, there's different <laughs> things I know about different things, you know. So Spider-Man is fun to draw because he gets in interesting positions that Superman doesn't get into, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's always fun to draw Spider-Man and you can draw him more muscular or you can draw him real skinny. Uh, you can draw him more cartoony. So I, I like doing Spider-Man. Um, but my favorite series to draw was Superman. Mm -hmm. It's the one I read as a kid and... Um, so when I got the chance to actually draw Superman, it was like an honor, you know, to be be working on, on Superman, I felt, even though it was late in my career. It was like 1991 before I ever got onto Superman, 20, almost 20 years after I started. Um, but I, I really enjoyed the whole cast of Superman, you know, Jimmy Olsen and Lois Lane and Perry White and all them um, as much as uh, drawing Superman. So I had a great time with that. Uh, Bensley, I was doing breakdowns, unfortunately, because um, that's what they wanted me to do. Um, I, I've never been happy just doing breakdowns. Like That's like the storytelling end of it. Right. And um, I like, because I started as an inker, maybe, I, I like the finish. The finish is really important to me. So I like to do either finish pencils or ink it myself. And um, I was, you know, never fast enough to do it every month like that. So I inked a few issues, pencils and inks on Superman, um, but uh, mostly penciling breakdowns. And then for inking, gosh, there's so many. Um, my favorite uh, artist to ink over was John Buscema's breakdowns. Mm. Because it would give you this amazing structure. And then you you know you could just do whatever you wanted with it because there was no blacks, no rendering. The drawing wasn't right. Even finished, right? Really loose breakdowns. And that was mostly, from what I remember, and hopefully maybe I'm off because then it always gives me, gives me something to look for. It was mostly Conan, right? Yeah, like, did you ink? Really, did you ever ink really anything over John that wasn't Conan? Uh oh. Oh no, Bob! Can you hear us? You're frozen. Yeah, I he blanked out for a second there. Oh. I inked a lot of uh, Tarzan covers over John. Uh, right. Some other, a couple of Thor covers, various things. But the, uh, the interior stuff was mostly Conan, wasn't it? Pardon? The interiors that you did over John was mostly Conan. Yeah, I was just going to say I inked half of an issue of Nova uh, oh. over over John's breakdowns uh joe rubenstein inked the back half i think and i inked the front half oh now you're gonna go find that and i don't know what number it is um did i ink anything else oh 21. i inked an issue of tuma dracula a little mm -hmm. story that he did in the black and white magazine of tuma dracula oh cool that is was that gray toned second. as well or was it just black and white that was tones, you know, black and white. It was there was a after this comic series ended, they, they started up the black and white magazine, so we could uh, use tones in an ink wash. And I did a lot of airbrush on it. Um, I think that was issue number five. If you want to look Ooh. it up, um, might be the only other time I did an interior job over him. I'm not sure. Yeah, it was Nova 21. Yep, right there, Nova 21. Well, now I have to go buy it because I love <laughs> finding new stuff. 
Bob, I'm not kidding. Dennis will tell you, I will find that book because I love a lot of what I buy now is older stuff just because the art, you know. Well, you can compare what Joe did on it and what I did on it. You know, our styles are in the same school kind of uh, that Neil Adams, Dick Giordano school. But um, I, I think we ink pretty differently. I do, too. Now, I, like I said, growing up, I could see a distinct difference between both of you guys. I could see that it was from the same school, like you said, but, you know, it's how you interpret things and, and whatnot. Um, but I'm glad that the other half was inked by Joe and it wasn't. I, I can think of names, but I'm not going to throw in any names out. But, you know, other than, you know, oh, uh, Joe Blow had to ink the other half. And I'd be like, oh, well, at least I have half the book to look at. Now I've got the whole thing. So, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, John had a lot of. Uh inkers who weren't that good um that did did not do well on his pencils you know his breakdowns you got what you're doing to ink those breakdowns and yeah actually my first color comic ink job was over john Buscema breakdowns i was up at continuity um god when was that i'm i don't think i was still working in production um and this this job came in that they needed an inker for and they were going to give it to Vince Coletta, but he was out of town. He could put and uh oh. I don't know if it's it can't be me. No, uh, you blanked out again. Are you there now? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, what are you saying? So so Kazar number seven, if you want to look it up, my first uh, color comic ink job. And, and I was over uh, John. So I, I, I was there in the office, said, Oh, John, I'll I'll do it. I'll I'll ink that job. And you know. Yeah. John was not at all confident in me being able to ink uh, John Buscema's breakdowns. And he said, well, you know, it's it's kind of a rush job and, and you've never inked breakdowns before. And I, I don't know. And I, I begged for it and he gave it to me because he couldn't find anybody else. <laughs> and so I had to do it in about two weeks, though. And wow. so... I got Joe Rubenstein to tighten up some of the drawing for me. And I got Klaus Jansen to ink a couple pages and Neil ink some heads and a couple things. Um, it was, it turned into kind of like a crusty bunker job, even though it wasn't credited that way. And it's a horrible job. I had, I had no idea how to ink his breakdowns. It, it's so bad. It's a horrible um, job that I'm writing down so I can find it. <laughs> Kazar number seven. I, I use Zipatone for the rain. Horrible, horrible, horrible. For rain? Now I got to see it. Yeah, the only good pages in that job are Klaus's two pages. Oh, sure. Joe, Joe Bernardo's asking, what was it like to work with John Byrne? Well, you know, um, I met John early on, uh, really enjoyed his earliest work. Uh, there was some, uh, I think it was a Marvel team up job that he penciled. Uh, oh God, uh, Thor, maybe. Um, I don't remember, but it was, I think it was inked by uh, Tony DeZuniga, maybe. Oh, I think it was Thor. As soon as you said Thor, I thought of this big splash or something John did that had a kind of a Neo vibe. I think it was Tony. It was a fun job. I, re I really liked it a lot. Um, but anyway, I, I met him at a con. I inked an uh, X-Men sketch over him at a, at a convention down in Miami, I think. Um, and then uh, the first time I inked him was on uh, Marvel Team Up 100, I believe. It was a backup story with Storm and Black Panther. Oh, cool. And... Uh, I really enjoyed inking it. Um, it was just, I think, 10 pages. Um, inked a cover or two over him. I did a Spider-Man cover um, that I, I sell prints of. It, it turned out pretty nice, and everybody likes that cover. Um, maybe it's Spider-Man 189, Amazing Spider-Man 189, I think. Um, and then I inked him on New Mutants. Uh, uh 75 75 okay i believe it's 75 was that over did he do breakdowns or full pencils no that was breakdowns that's um, what i thought okay 
really cartoony breakdowns. So I kind of inked it in a cartoony style. Oh, okay. Um, instead of trying to, you know, just redraw his his drawing, which is what I would have had to do to make it more realistic. Um, and I think uh, I read somewhere, Comics Journal somewhere, got some criticism uh, for my inking on that job uh, because it didn't look like John Byrne. But I mean, it was loose breakdowns in a cartoony style. It wasn't the way he was drawing the X-Men. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I know what it, I, I've seen his breakdowns before. It's weird because just the evolution of Byrne, I mean, that's a whole other topic, you know, from then to, to yeah. now. Um, I mean, kind of a tangent, but have you seen the fan fiction, the X-Men stuff he's drawing? Have you seen any of that or? No, I haven't seen it. I've heard about it. I haven't seen it. He's on issue 28. Issue 28. He has drawn 27 issues and three pages of issue 28. <laughs> so what? Marvel's letting him use the X-Men characters? He's not doing anything with it. He's just drawing it. He's writing he's it. Publishing. He's, nobody. <laughs> he's a nut. That's the thing. He's just he's just drawing it. Uh, he sells the originals. And the only reason I know this is because of Facebook. He sells the originals. And then some people will keep the originals in pencil. And then some will, I think Rubenstein's inked a couple pages. You know, the, whoever bought a page or two was like, hey, would you ink this? I know Scott Williams, I think, inked the two-page spread over, you know, from one of the issues. So he's just doing it. Uh, you know, all I know is from what I've read online, I think he and Marvel talked and they just couldn't come to an agreement. And uh, that was that. But he's still doing it. It's his version of X-Men after issue 137 and Jean Grey never dies. Well, you know, he sells his originals for a lot of money, so he can afford oh, yeah. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, the stuff's very, I mean, I've blue lined a whole page just for fun, you know, cause I mean, I ain't burn here and there just on a, maybe six or seven pages total, you know, in my career helping out. I, I remember I was helping out John Beatty on a Spider-Man job and ink some pages and stuff, but you know, his stuff, it's cool because it's all there, but you have to ink it, you know? Um, but yeah, just the fact that he's not, as far as I know, he's not doing any work for IDW. He's just doing this. <laughs> yeah, I think he finished off the Star Trek stuff. So yeah, it was, it was fun to ink. I enjoyed inking him. Yeah. So how did New Mutants come about? The whole creation of that with uh, Claremont and stuff. Well, I had worked my actually first uh, superhero penciling job was uh, Marvel team up uh i should know the 76 um but anyway chris wrote the story and mm -hmm. i penciled it um finally convinced the editors at marvel that i could draw comics and they they gave me a, a shot at drawing a fill-in of, of marvel team up and um then i did maybe a couple other things with Chris fill-ins uh, and then they needed a, a fill-in on X-Men, X-Men 151. Jim Sherman had started it and abandoned it for whatever reason. And he had done layouts uh, on a few pages and finished pencils on like two or three pages. And so he needed somebody to finish penciling the book. Uh, and then Rubenstein was inking it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I penciled that issue and I think I inked uh, the last two pages myself. And then, so they needed somebody on the next issue as well. And so I, I inked X-Men 152. I mean, I penciled X-Men 152 and Rubenstein inked that issue. And um, they offered me the job of, of penciling the X-Men every month. Oh. And I said, great. Uh, you know, I can't wait. And then they said, or we're going to do this spinoff title. We hadn't got a a name for it yet but it's going to be a younger group of uh mutants um and a little more multicultural and you could be the uh, uh code you know co-creator on that book 
And I said, well, I, I kind of want to draw the X-Men, you know, <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> it was a tough choice, you know, because I didn't know if the New Mutants was going to totally tank and, you know, then I'd be out of uh, a job in a couple of weeks or a couple of months, sure. rather, or if it was going to take off and be a success. Um, whereas the X-Men, you know, one of their top titles, uh, it would have been great to draw the X-Men every month. So. I really, you know, was really hesitant to take the New Mutants, um, but I said, well, you know, when am I going to get another chance to be a co-creator on a new series? Um, and it sounds like it has potential. So I, you know, kind of reluctantly chose <laughs> chose New Mutants over the X-Men. Wow. So looking back with hindsight being twenty twenty, do you take New Mutants or do you stick with X-Men? No, no, it's it was the right choice. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's what I'm best known for now is yeah. uh, creating new mutants. And, um, you know, who knows what it would have been like to, to draw the X-Men instead. Maybe I would have drawn it for 10 years or, or maybe sure. just a few issues. Who knows? It's, it's, it's hard to say. Now, did the graphic, wait, what came out first? The graphic novel came out first, right? That's yeah, how they it was going to be it. just a regular comic, and I started penciling it as a regular comic, uh, just did the first few pages, and then the graphic novel line was starting up, and they were looking for projects to turn into graphic novels, and um, so they they said, hey, let's make it a graphic novel. I said, yeah, great, that'll be fun, uh, but as a comic book, it wasn't on the schedule yet, and I was going to have all the time in the world to put my very best work into doing the first issue. And um, when it turned into a graphic novel, suddenly it was twice as many pages and it was behind schedule. And so. There we go. <laughs> we keep jumping out for a few, a few seconds. Yeah, that's so okay. on top of that, I happened to be getting married at the same time. Oh, wow. And so they were going to, because it was a rush job, they were going to give the inks to somebody else. And I said, oh, no, it's it's a graphic novel. It's the first issue of this new series. you got to let me ink it. Um, so reluctantly, they said, well, all right, you, you can ink it, but you got to get it in, you know, by this date or whatever. And so I ended up having to ink it while I was on my honeymoon. Oh, no oh, way. Wow. <laughs> That's and, and now here's the real question. Where was that honeymoon at? <laughs> Luckily, uh, oh, you broke up Florida on Anna Maria Island. Oh, yeah. And so uh, she she let us stay at her beach house. So it was like a month long honeymoon. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it wasn't like, you know, <laughs> it wasn't like I didn't have a honeymoon. We, we had plenty of time together, uh, but I was I was working while my wife was out enjoying the beach. Right. No, I hear you. Uh, Stippling Vaughn says your book on inking is awesome. I can vouch for that because you uh, you gave me a copy when you first put it out, that uh, that book. And I just love seeing the before and after. I mean, seeing the breakdowns and then even the pencils. You know, one of the fun jobs, um, I don't know how fun it was for you, but as a fan was, um, well, the original Mike Zek Craven stuff was great. But then when you did the, I think it was just a one shot square bound, but it was kind of more and you could say the imagey style, you know, so, I thought that was a fun job. I don't know if you had fun doing that. Were you directed to ink it that way or what was the deal with that? No, you know, that came out in the nineties and all the editors were wanting stuff that looked like the image style. And um, it got to the point where it was getting a little harder to get, ink jobs if you didn't work in that style mm -hmm. um so i was just trying to show them that i could do something similar um it was mike did breakdowns on that was right. called the soul of the hunter mike did breakdowns on it and wasn't expecting me to ink it like that i don't oh I don't no know. <laughs> i don't know <laughs> if he liked it um <laughs> But uh, I just decided I'm, I'm going to do something different on this. And I had a lot of fun with it. I enjoyed it. So Mike wasn't expecting it. Did you, before you started then, 
did you say anything like to the editor? Like, I think I'm going to do this or was it a shock to their system too? I, I imagine they were shocked too. I don't remember who the editor was on it. Um, but you know, my whole career, there wasn't a lot of communication with the editors and the, and the pencilers. Um, they would just give me a job and I would do it and turn it in and yeah. they would say thanks. And, you know, that was pretty much it. Sometimes they would give you another job. Sometimes they wouldn't. Um, very little feedback my right. whole career really so i don't i don't know what the editors thought of that inking uh didn't really talk to mike about it afterwards much except he was he told me he was surprised to see, to see it in that style yeah. but he didn't say he didn't like it but i don't know really if he liked it or not so joe bernardo wants to know who your favorite new mutant is that you created well you know those those are those are my kids, so it's hard to just say I, I love one more than another one. <laughs> but secretly, you do. <laughs> I mean, Dennis has two kids. He tells me privately which one he likes out of the two. Well, it, it all depends on which day of the week. <laughs> yeah. uh, the best, as far as the which one i enjoy drawing the most is probably danny moonstar i was going to say if you say sunspot i'm going to be like well seriously is this silhouette come on <laughs> no i i like drawing danny moonstar um i enjoy drawing uh cannonball because i was yeah. able to uh, make him uh, a little more cartoony looking you know with the big ears and kind of lanky and um uh, not your average superhero looking guy Mm -hmm. uh, and then I always thought Rain was kind of cute, so she was fun to draw. Um, so Sunspot was probably my least fun to draw, although of course I like a lot about a lot of things about him. Um, he was supposed to when I designed him, he was supposed to be a little guy, and and the way Chris Chris had him in mind. <laughs> there we go again so after i left the book another artist came on um they yeah. started making him taller and same height as cannonball and uh he got oh. lighter and lighter skin it, it's a, it's a mess when when other people take over you know oh, i'll yeah. have to go back and look at that i never really paid that much attention i have the graphic novel and, a, and a, some of the issues but I have to go back and you look can at come that. Over and borrow any I can look at any because he has them all. <laughs> um, yeah, so I designed them, doing... I designed them to look like individuals. You know, I wanted to look yeah. like certain, like they had, a, like they were somebody, not just another stereotypical superhero. Right. Oh yeah. No, totally. I mean, they all definitely had distinct personalities, and I think, you know, kind of like you said. You, you like the cartoonier stuff more and that's what you envisioned doing before you got into comics and, you know, pulling that influence in to creating those characters definitely helps instead of, you know, going, well, this is how you learn how to draw a head. So I'll just change the hairstyle. You know what I mean? That's what a lot of artists used to do at the time. They yeah. would just color the hair differently to have a different character, you know, <laughs> give them yeah. wavy hair instead of curly hair, but it was the same face all the time. Right. So I think that's... Yeah, but I, came, I, I came out of um, studying Mort Drucker, you know, doing right. caricatures. Um, so I was I was all about all these different facial features. Did you ever get a chance to meet Mort? No, I've heard he's a wonderful, was a wonderful man. Um, I wrote him a fan letter, uh, the only fan letter I ever wrote to anybody when I was, I don't know, a young teenager. Um, and he wrote back to me a very nice letter. Um, uh, you know, just general stuff. I just basically told him I thought he was God and he came back yeah. and said, oh, thanks very much, you know. <laughs> well, you know, that's funny, Bob. That's how I met Dennis. He wrote me a fan letter and then I responded and then I saw him stalking me outside my house and I was like, well, that turned dark really fast. <laughs> wow. Um, what, um, when you were doing Superman, because I have some of those, Holy shnikes, Bob McLeod, our buddy Michael says. Hello. That's right. Um, 
I do remember you did the you did the Superman. One of the issues is the splash page where he revealed himself to Lois, if I remember right. Yeah, what an honor! Like I was saying, I mean, uh, of all the issues uh, to be able to draw, and you know, there were three Superman titles at the time: Jerry mm -hmm. Ordway, uh, Dan Jurgens uh, were inking the other two. And Jerry's actually the guy that got me the job on Superman. I was I was inking Dale Keown over at Marvel on the Hulk. Oh and yeah. And Jerry came up to the office when I happened to be there turning in some pages, and he said, "You know, I always liked your penciling. Why don't you do more penciling?" And I said, "Oh, I, you know, I don't know. I just kind of kind of take what comes along and having a good time inking Dale here." And he said, "Well, we need a a penciler on one of the Superman titles. Would you be interested?" And I said, Superman, well, sure. Um, so I went over and, and talked to the Mike Carlin, the editor on Superman, and ended up, uh, you know, dropping Dale to start penciling on Superman. And Did, then they um, gave me that issue to, to draw, and I was, I was stunned that they picked me, because really you would think they would give it to Jerry. I'm not yeah. sure why they didn't. Um, but anyway, yeah, that was, that was a great issue, and I got to pencil and ink that one myself. One of my favorite ones you did is uh, the one with Batman guest starred in it. Was that two issues or one? Do you remember? What was the question? <laughs> when uh, one of my favorite was the issue with Batman, but I can't remember if it was two issues or one that he was in. Do you? It was just it was just one um, issue six fifty four. My second issue. Okay. Um, my first time drawing Batman ever, um, and maybe my last. I don't think. And I that was inked by that. Brett. I think that was inked by Brett, wasn't it? Yes. So you haven't been inked by many guys, I assume. Like I can think of Brett, and I can think of Joe. Who else has inked you? I was so lucky to get some top inkers, and I never was happy with any of them. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. Brett and Joe did great work over me, but it, it wasn't my inking, and I always just right. wanted to ink myself. Uh, but Tom Palmer inked me on uh, Star Wars, and oh, that's Tom's right. my favorite inker. Was that um, breakdowns though? I was doing breakdowns, yeah. Yeah, okay. Because because he was the inker before I came on the book, and he wanted a breakdown penciler. He didn't want me to do finished pencils. Right, um, right. That's right. I totally forgot about that. Me. I'm I'm having I'm blanking. Uh, I did it. I did an issue of Team Superman. Mark Pennington inked that issue, and I oh. thought he did a good job. And yeah, then like Denny Rodier took over on uh, Superman later on uh, from Brett. Um, after I inked my few, I did three issues, and then Denny Rodier started inking me on Superman. Oh, that's cool. Uh... So I'm assuming like a lot of guys that, you know, from your, your era or whatever, you sold most of your artwork. Yeah. Don't well, let's not get into that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, we didn't know the art was going to go up in value the way it did. And we needed the money. The page rates were low and yeah. um, there wasn't this big con circuit at the time. So we kind of really needed to uh, add to our income by selling our original artwork. And, you know, we just always figured, well, I'll be doing more. There's always going to be more stuff coming in, you know, right. doesn't, it's not that big a deal. Um, so, yeah, I, I hung on to mostly the work that I penciled and inked. And oh, then cool. I would sell the, the uh, originals that I only did inking on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So does that mean you still actually have pages from that Superman issue where he reveals himself? I've got that whole issue. Yeah. Oh, see, that's oh, awesome. That's cool. That's really cool. Is yeah, there except, any puzzler that you never? That I inked? hate. I hate to just sell one page out of that issue. You yeah. Know, that whole issue. Exactly. No, I agree. Is there any? Um, is there any puzzler you never got to ink that you wanted to? You know, I'm, I ink so many different pencilers. I was very lucky. I, I was considered one of the top penciler, top, top inkers. So I got to mm -hmm. ink so many different people. Um, 
I mean, you know, the guy that started me in the business, Neil Adams, I've never inked Neil. I was going to uh, ask if you ever just even just like a face here or nothing, huh? I did one time. He did a little tiny Superman and tiny Batman, uh, really rough little sketches on a napkin or something that somebody had me ink uh, back in the late 70s. Um, and I didn't do that good a job on it because I was still kind of improving my inking. Um, but I've never really inked Neil. Uh, but other than that, I think I got to ink pretty much everybody that I wanted to. Oh, Jim Aparo. Oh, that uh, would have been cool. He was one of my favorites. And I did one ink job over him um, where he was just um, inking some pages and then some other penciler was doing other pages. And I was inking both of them. Um, but it was late in his career, you know, yeah. and he did his, uh, like most of us, he did his best stuff earlier. Right. And, um, uh, but, you know, I, I pretty much got to ink everybody. What about this guy? This guy's asking Steve Ditko. You know, I was never a Ditko fan. I, I know that's sacrilege to say. <laughs> <laughs> now you're a good company with me. I don't, I appreciate obviously what Steve contributed and I actually, his art has grown on me over the years, but you know, when I think Spider-Man for that time period, I just think John, John senior. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate Ditko's work. I, I can see the good things about it. Um, it's just not the what I'm interested in and sure. never came along uh, a chance for me to ink him. Yeah. Joe was My asking, how, how did you come up with um, Magic being Colossus's sister? That wasn't me. You know, um, Chris came up with uh, Ileana being Colossus's sister and uh, put her in one of the early issues of the New Mutants um, as Ileana, not as magic. Uh, and I left the book before she started uh, being magic. Oh. I think that was Tom Mandrake, maybe, who was on the book when she appeared. Right, right. So if there was one book that was like, that's the one that I'm like most proud of. Is there one that you can think of that you worked on? You know, pencil wise. I mean, um, obviously that Superman issue where he reveals yeah. that he's uh, Superman. Uh, and then I did a uh, mini series of Spider-Man and the Punisher um, where I penciled and inked most of that. I got, you know, deadline at the end, they had to uh, say, okay, we need the pages, Bob. Um, and I, I didn't have time. So I got Lee Weeks to pencil the second half of the third issue. But I penciled and inked two issues and um, inked the third one and penciled half the third one. And I think that's one of my best jobs. Oh, here's a good question. And I don't actually know the answer either. Have you ever inked George Perez? Are you kidding? Yeah, I've inked a lot of George Perez. Wait, now I'm trying to remember on what? Because I, I... Well, I'll tell you, I I think I was the, the uh, George's first inker when he started at Marvel. I inked a job over George uh, on the Sons of the Tiger in the Black and White Kung Fu magazines. There you go. Is that the, is I, that the White Tiger character or was in that stuff? I think so. Um but I, you know, he, he started out as an assistant to Rich Buckler, I think. Yeah. And this was 1974, maybe. I had just uh, started inking. He had just started penciling. And um, I, I looked at that stuff and I said, boy, this, this is the worst penciler I've ever seen. It was so <laughs> bad. Every background had the same stone walls because um, it's the only background he knew how to draw, it seemed like. Um and then he got so good after that. So so he kept just getting better and better. Yeah. Um, but he's like, you know, most of us, he started out pretty rough. Um, but right. then I inked, a, I inked a lot of covers over him. And then at huh. DC, I inked um, the Teen Titans, the New Titans, they were called. Oh, OK. Did a lot of issues over him on that. I inked Wonder Woman over him. Oh. Well, that's a big gap in my memory then. What about uh, somebody's asking, I, and I think I know the answer to this, but Joe Staten? Never inked Joe Staten. Yeah, I didn't think so. That's really cool. Um, 
So wait, going back to the art that you keep, because you said you keep art that you pencil and ink, New Mutants graphic novel then. Or was that at a time where you were selling stuff? That was at the time when I was selling stuff. I sold that for some magic beans or something. I got almost nothing for that. <laughs> uh, you know, that was it's pathetic how how little I I sold the uh, New Mutant graphic novel pages for. Um, yeah, but it's like you said, nobody knew. I mean, you know, it's it's a. I was lucky getting you know starting in ninety one when I did and and having Hubert Joe Joe Hubert is a teacher and. He would constantly tell us, don't sell your stuff. Don't sell your stuff. So like for the first four or five years in the business, I did sell my stuff. But around 95 or 96, I was like, nah. And I've just been holding on to it unless somebody else yeah. inked it. You know, everything else I hold on to. So. But, yeah, you know, you know I did the um, first annual, New Mutants annual. Mm -hmm. uh, pencils and inks on that. And had that for decades and I just sold the whole uh, book of that uh, to somebody this past year. Oh, cool. Well, congratulations. Uh, so I got a decent price for it. Um, sure. But it'll probably go up and then I'll be sorry I sold it too. You know, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I've sold art that I've bought of another artist I bought it and then sold it. And then a few years after that, see it on the market and go, are you kidding me? So, yeah, <laughs> yeah very sore subject. Let's let's uh, not talk about that. And no, no, actually, no, 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 Andy, no. Andy, I've got um, company coming over for dinner at 6. No, we're so good. I can't really stick around much longer. I was about to say we're, you know, unless Dennis has anything else, I was going to say we can wrap it up. So we usually go for an hour. So yeah, yeah perfect timing. Yeah. All right. Well, it's been fun. I enjoyed talking to you guys and um, hope hope uh, you enjoyed it as well. We did. Okay. And for, for everybody watching, I have Bob's website. Make sure it should be in the description. Okay. Uh, Bob's website should be in the description below. So you can go there. And I did a video on uh, the hows and whys of comic books that Bob did. It's there, right? Yep. Yep. And his inking book, I believe, is available there as well, among other things. So if you want to get a hold of Bob, just click the link in the description below. And, yeah, we thanks for joining, Bob. Really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully I'll see you at a con sometime soon. I'm, I'm sure you will. All right. Nice talking to you guys. Yep. Take care, yes. Bob. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, guys, there you go. That was Bob McLeod. I'm so glad he was able to join us. Uh, definitely go to his site. Thank you for posting that there, Hyper Kaiju, and we posted it too. Check out his stuff. He's got, like I said, the, the book where he shows what an inker really does for sale, and he also has the book, The Hows and Whys of uh, Comic Book Art. Um, he is a wealth of knowledge. He's a real nice guy, as you can see. Very and, laid uh, back. He really oh, yeah, is he's very really laid, laid back. back. Well, you know, he's, he's, he's from that time where, you know, who knows? Just a, You never know. I'm just saying. <laughs> So if he, hey, as soon as he told me that he knew Pat and all that, I know Pat likes to partake. So uh, there you go. Guys, we will see you next week. Until then, thank you for joining us. We are going to grab some food. And uh, I think we'll leave you with what we like to title, The Fight. Bye, everybody. Live long and prosper.